How's it going, people? Well, another day, another laugh track. This is from the Jesus people. They are a local and loco product. Anyway, this is God's simple plan of salvation. Obviously intended for simple people. So, let's find out. My friend, I am asking you the most important question of your life. Wow, good thing I'm sitting down. Your joy or your sorrow for all eternity depends upon your answer. The question is, are you saved? It is not a question, question of how good you are, nor if you are a church member. But are you saved? Damn it. Are you sure you will go to heaven when you die? Are you sure you want to? <laughs> oh, that's right. There is no choice. It's that or torture forever. God says in order to go to heaven, you must be born again. My mom's not going to be happy to hear about that, being that she's 73 years old now. Um, actually, she's born again. She'd be thrilled if I would get reborn. <laughs> not, you know, in the symbolic way these folks do. In John 3.7, Jesus said to Nicodemus, You must be born again, like he just said. <laughs> it's a little track, and they're repeating themselves. In the Bible, God gives us the plan of how to be born again, which means to be saved. His plan is simple. You can be saved today. How? Let's find out. First, my friend, buddy, buddy, it's my friend here, whoever this person is. You must realize you are a sinner. Well, at least it's a friend telling me this. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that comes from Romans 3.23. <clears throat> because you are a sinner, you are condemned to death. you got to die. Just like plankton and birds and bees and sycamore trees and all that. Everything dies and then it's recycling. Kind of like being born again, but not. Uh, yeah. For the wages of sin, and it's here and then it's red lettered. Although I'm noticing their red letters aren't so accurate because they're red lettering Leviticus down here. Are they saying Jesus was in the Old Testament talking? Anyway, um, for the wages of Payment of sin is death. <laughs> I lost my place already. Right. Yeah, is death. Romans 6.23 This includes eternal separation from God in hell. Damn you. I love all these broken, faded-in verses, you know. They're just giving you part of it, the part they want to use. It is appointed 
unto men to die, uh, men once to die, but after this, the judgment. And that's Hebrews 9, 27. Aren't we getting edumacated now? We can find our way around the Bible. Yeah. But God loved you so much, he created hell. There's one school of thought that he actually made hell before he made anything else. I think that's a Calvinist or something. I forgot who. Uh, Oh, God loved you so much he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to bear your sin and die in your place. Because there's got to be blood spilt. It's a pagan thing. <laughs> it's a primitive way of thinking. <sighs> Hanging on like an appendix that we don't need anymore. <sighs> For the Life of the flesh is in the blood. And that's Leviticus 17.11, and it's red-lettered, as if J.C. said it. In Leviticus. All right. Without shedding of blood, no remission. And I got it in parentheses, pardon. In case you don't know what remission is. Then again, you might not know what a pardon is either, especially if you're in Texas. Uh, <clears throat> Hebrews 9, 22. God commandeth his love toward us. That's sweet. And a little, kind of a little scary. Yeah, I don't want anyone loving me that much. <sighs> that, in that. While we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Net Romans 5, 8. Although we cannot understand how God said my, said my sins and your sins were laid upon Jesus, and he died in our place. Yeah, although we can't understand how. I notice they just left that trailing off. And in a period without them clarifying, he became our substitute. Scapegoat? It is true. God cannot lie. So you got to buy it, man. <clears throat> My friend. And they go into a quote that's red lettered God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Except this verse has been doctored and the, they got the beginning, then dot dot dot, and they jump to commandeth. So there's a huge section they just cut out. And I'm sure they could have put it in if they would have taken a few repetitions out. It had room for it then. All right. This repentance is a change of mind that agrees with God that one is a sinner and also agrees with what Jesus did for us on the cross. Now here's what happened. He got rounded up. They arrested him. They interrogated him. They imprisoned him. You know, tried him. And then they nailed him to a cross with other people. And he was one of thousands that underwent that... Pilate got kicked out of Jerusalem. Rome thought he was too brutal even. He wasn't washing his hands or even wringing him over anything. <clears throat> All right. We're going to get through this, I promise. <sighs> well, you might not, but I'm going to. All right. In Acts 16.30-31, through 31, the Philippian jailer asked Paul, and Silas, and then they cut in the middle of a verse, and it's red-lettered, so this has nothing to do with Jesus' dialogue. All right. I guess it's any dialogue. All right. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? 
And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And he did. With um, <sighs> he was a pagan anyway. He was programmed to believe shit like that. Simply believe on him as the one who bore your sin, died in your place, was buried, and whom God resurrected. His resurrection powerfully assures that the believer can claim everlasting everlasting life when Jesus is received as Savior. <clears throat> All right, some more red letter. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become, become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, and that's John 1, 12. <sighs> but, wait, whosoever includes you, they were talking about you too. Whosoever includes you shall be saved means not maybe, but can, but shall be saved. Surely you realize you are a sinner? Right now, wherever you are, repenting, lift your heart to God in prayer. In Luke 18, 13, the sinner prayed, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. And Voltaire prayed, O oh God, if there is one, save my soul if I have one. I like Voltaire. <sighs> uh. I believe Jesus was my substitute when he died on the cross. I believe he shed his blood, death, burial, and resurrection were for me. I now receive him as my Savior. I thank you for your forgiveness of my sins, the gift of salvation, and everlasting life. Because of your merciful grace, amen. Well, that was nice. You know, nice sample prayer, in case you don't know how. Just take God at his word and claim his salvation by faith. Nobody see anything wrong with that state a little that sentence there? <laughs> Take someone at their word, anyone? Because you know God isn't saying anything, it's his earth, earthly representatives. You know, in non imagination land, formerly known as reality, the real world, you know, where all the real things are happening. Okay. <sighs> I lost my place. Yeah. Believe and you will be saved. <sighs> uh, no church, no lodge, no good works can save you. Remember, God does the saving, all of it. So you know who's asked to kiss, but you'll have to settle for an earthly representative. Because <laughs> they're real. They exist. God's simple plan of salvation is, you are a sinner. 
Therefore, unless you believe on Jesus, who died in your place, you will spend eternity in hell. If you believe on him as, as your crucified, buried, then risen Savior, you receive forgiveness for all your sins and his gift of eternal salvation by faith. You say, surely it cannot be that simple. I say, surely you can't be that simple, can you? You can't be that simple, can you? All right. Yes, that's simple. It is scriptural. There's your evidence. It's in a dusty old book of desert fables. So you gotta believe it, because it's tradition. Yeah. If you believe on him, wait, wait, wait. you receive forgiveness for all your sins and his gift <coughs> of eternal salvation by faith. You say, it's God's plan. My friend, believe on Jesus and receive him as your savior today. Supplies are limited, so hurry. Many will be called, few chosen. If his plan is not perfectly clear, read this tract over and over. <sighs> That'll help. <laughs> Without laying it down until you understand it. It works best with sleep deprivation and fasting and stuff like that. Yeah, that'll make you holy. Your soul, your soul is worth more than all the world. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Why did I not see that one coming? Mark 8, 36. Be sure you are saved. If you lose your soul, you miss heaven and lose all. Please, let God save you this very moment. See, I could be making Christians right now. Who knows? God's power will save you, keep you saved, and enable you to live a victorious life, a victorious Christian life. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. And that's one Corinthians ten thirteen. Do not trust your feelings, they change. Stand on God's promises. They never change. <clears throat> After you are saved, there are three things to practice daily for spiritual growth. Pray. You talk to God, your imaginary friend. Uh, and the print's so small on this, I keep losing my spot. Uh, read the, your Bible. I, I gotta agree. Please, everybody read the Bible. I believe you should start at page one and just keep going straight through. Take copious notes and then do it again. Yeah, 
That'll make a lot of new religiotards, won't it? Not. <laughs> yeah, please read the Bible. God talks to you in the Bible. Witness. That's the annoying part. You talk for God. And why is that necessary? He can just open the clouds up and give it, hit the PA system, you know? Give a worldwide announcement. Hey, everybody, I exist. Sorry, I hit the snooze alarm. <laughs> Another millennium slipped by. <sighs> you should be baptized in accordance to the Lord Jesus Christ as a public testimony of your salvation. And then unite with a Bible-believing church without delay. <laughs> Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. That's 2 Timothy 1.8. I don't know why they thought was, that was worth it. <laughs> it's just part of it anyway. Uh, Whosoever therefore shall confess... And then they got testify of, in brackets, it's not in the Bible, this is their interpretation. Confess me before men. Yeah, that is a testimony. testimony. I've done that. It's humiliating. Um, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. He'll pass the word on to Dad. He hasn't taken over the family business just yet. That's Matthew. Oh, Matthew. Uh, wait. Yeah, that's Matthew uh, ten thirty-two. All right, and that's uh, from the Jebus people. And I will include all this information wherever the information goes. And I hope you learned something. I know that this is a muddle, and I should redo it, like I should redo the last one. But nah. That's enough. I think I'll... I've got more tracks, but I think I'll do some DNC next. So, stay tuned. If you learned something, please share. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful... Whatever the fuck it is you're having, because... Don't you hate it when people point? Anyway, bye.